Israel, the single most important place on the planet, the holiest place where our Lord Jesus lived and walked and taught and set the example is again being besieged. The ancient hatred towards these people exists still today as we see yet again. It had been a while, what, a little over a year or so, maybe, since we had rocket fire coming in and exchanges like this. But the idea of murdering and exterminating the Jews and obliterating them from the face of the earth, running them out until there are no more, and possessing that land just goes back a long way. So you've heard about the Iron Dome and how it's protecting them. Now there's rocket fire being exchanged. But I want people to, to truly understand how far this goes back. It truly is biblical. Now, you can see here all these different times that they got attacked and taken over and destroyed and retook it and just got attacked again later on and things destroyed and taken over. So the idea of the ancient is present in the modern. Destroy them and take it over. If you cannot understand history of the ancient, you can't grasp the modern and you certainly won't be able to understand what's coming in the future. The total destruction of the first temple, which was Solomon's, was on the ninth of Ab, 586 BC, carried out by the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar. The second temple, Herod's temple, destroyed by the Romans, 70 AD. The army of Simon Bar Koba was destroyed by the Roman legions in 135 AD. You're going to see the ninth of Ab is usually a, a, a historic date of when things happen. King Edward of England, the first, expelled them all on the ninth of Ab. Ferdinand and Isabella expelled all the Jews in Spain. 1914, World War One, ninth of Ab declared. Persecuted the Jews. And this is just some of the battles and the sieges against Jerusalem. Some. This city is known at that time as Jebus. Jebusites inhabited it, which are a Canaanite tribe. Partial seas by the tribe of Judah. Takes place shortly after the death of Joshua. 1380 B.C., 1003 B.C., King David attacks the Jebusites, takes the city, it becomes the capital of the United Israel, henceforth known as the city of David. 925 B.C., Shishak, king of Egypt, attacks during the reign of Judah's king Rehoboam. Temple is plundered. 850 B.C., Philistines, Arabians, Ethiopians lay siege during the rule of King Jehoram. King's palace sacked and the temple plundered. 792 B.C. 
Jehoash, king of Israel, attacks Amaziah, king of Judea. Jerusalem and the temple are pillaged. Jehoash captures Amaziah and takes him captive. 735 to 732, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, king of Israel, attacks Ahaz, king of Judah. Ahaz seeks the aid of Piglet Pileser, king of Assyria, to deliver him from his trouble of Rezan and Pekah. Piglet Pileser conquers Damascus and executes Rezan. 701 B.C. Benarachabib, king of Assyria, tries to lay siege to the city during the reign of King Hezekiah. He threatens to destroy Jerusalem, but God has the angel of the Lord kill 185,000 troops as they're getting ready to go in. 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, conquers the city. The prophet Daniel and his companions are taken captive to Babylon. 597 BC, Nebuchadnezzar again attacks the city. He captures King Jehoshuan, to whom he takes to Babylon. 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar attacks a third time. He burns the temple, destroys the city, and carries all the temple treasures to Babylon. 320 BC, General Nisenor of Egypt marches on Syria and takes control of the area, including Jerusalem. About 200 BC, City attacked by Antiochus the Great. 175 BC, the new ruler of the Hellenistic Seleucid Empire is Antiochus Epiphanes. He pillages Jerusalem and then places an altar to the pagan god Zeus within the temple. 164 BC, Judas Maccabeus leads an army of Jewish dissidents to victory. The city is captured and the temple is rededicated. 134 BC. Seleucid King Antiochus VII recaptures the city, according to Jewish historian Josephus. And John Hyrcanus opens King David's sepulcher and removes 3,000 talents of gold to pay Antiochus to spare the city. Assuming a modern value of 1,500 per troy ounce, see, there would be worth $4.9 billion back then. 63 B.C., the Roman Republic under Pompey the Great occupies Judea, or Palestine, and takes Jerusalem. 70 A.D., the Roman legions attack and take the city by storm. Jerusalem and its temple are completely destroyed. 132 to 135 A.D., the political revolt is started by Sarman Bar Kokhba against the Romans. Although he initially controlled Jerusalem for three years, the Romans brutally crush his rebellion and gain back control of the city. 636 to 637 A.D., Caliph Omar the Great besieges and captures the city. 1099 A.D., the city is captured by the army of the First Crusade, and they murder almost all the Jews and Muslims. 1187 A.D., Jerusalem is taken from the Crusaders by Saladin. Well, you see, you should be able to now. Can you see the hatred that's always been? Do you see it now? It has survived all that time. That little place, as small as it is, the country of Israel and its people were killed and sacked and looted and destroyed at different times all throughout history to this day, our modern time. But God Almighty has had his hand on that place all that time through all that fight and through all that death. And he's allowed the people to survive. Several million of them to this day. And he's allowed that land to have been taken back by them. You see, 
take it away, get it back, 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 over and over and over again. Every time something bad takes it away, God allows it to come back and be gave back to them. So when you think of prophecy in the future, it doesn't seem that there can be any peace because there is no guarantee of the safety, security of the people of Israel. If the hatred is so great that you will not tolerate the people living in the land like God wants them to, or even being alive and existing, then Israel can make no peace concession. If there cannot be security and safety, you can't agree to it. If there were no murdering, if there was no no motive, they could live peacefully in that land, you know, side by side. You could have, you know, all different kinds of Arabs all around them, living next door to you. As long as you weren't planning on killing anybody. There's no doubt in my mind they'd, they'd be happy to, to share that land. You know? No doubt. But when people want you dead, you, you don't feel secure. You wouldn't feel secure if your next door neighbor wanted you dead. You would be watching your next door neighbor very closely to make sure he didn't try to carry something through. You'd be protective. You'd be on guard. You wouldn't trust him. There you go. That's the way it is. We're over here. They're over there. We see, but we don't experience. So when you see the hatred, seeing it's different than actually living around it. And then somebody's going to say, well, they hate the Palestinians you know, and stuff like that. But as long as they're not trying to kill them, they get along with them. Well, they got them cornered in a little piece of land, and they won't let them have this land, that land, and the other land. Because they want to kill them. They want the whole pie. They don't want to share the pie. They want all the pie. Do you get it? They don't want to, sh the other side doesn't want to share the land. They want it all for themselves and to hell with the occupants of it now, the Israelis. They don't care. They don't want them to have any of the land. So agreeing on sharing it, they will not do. So... I don't see any peace treaty. I see them crying for peace and peace and wanting it. But as far as securing a covenant with many, I'm, I'm not quite so sure that that has peace treaty written on it. Until there can be hatred wiped out from a person, that is your only guarantee that they're not going to hurt you. If there's no love there between human X and human Y, and there's hate in human X against human Y, then there's mistrust. There's no security. There's no anything. And you're going to go right back to this. You're going to stay like this. But where this goes, who knows? I think they'll put this... Uh, They'll put this down. They always have. They will take whatever measures they have to. And, you know, if things really hit the, the fan, uh, the Samson option is what they would do. You know, we'll take everybody out if we're going down because they're not going down again. Ever. Never. So, try to wrap your mind around how many times they've been persecuted 